zero, but when he hits that level 16 mark is where he becomes a terror. And Cassidy and Yumi, whew, that's scary. That is really, really scary in terms of late game threat. So we're going to be having a late game. What do you call it when the Hulk calls you? <laughs> Avenger Rank. Avenger Rank? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I've had that one for way too long. Yankos will win the smite fight over Elioya. Gets the spectral more, and Elioya might have to flash away. Yankos could look for the flash auto. Elioya flashes first. Ooh, He's roaming up with Kaiser, putting a bit of pressure down in mid. Rika wants to get a quick recall off. Let's see if Kaiser can land a hook. Yeah, he was expecting Cavs to try and jump away from that. Yankos does have. A cat on his shoulders as they look for this gank in the mid lane. And Yoya here as well, though. Cap's going to get pulled back in night, going down, flashes away from the EQ combo. Targamus, though, yeah, you've got nowhere to go. That cat's been put down as Mad Lions get first. Really Blood. not as consequential as that early rift held. Uh, with that, of course, with five minutes before the plates come back up, you're looking at breaking a tower, or at least getting, you know, 300 crop. <laughs> we'll be able to secure it and is likely going to drop the Herald right here and now. So what are G2 doing to answer? Well, they've got three plates in the top lane. Armour just chases straight onto Caps there. Ignites from the spell book. Yanko's looking for something in the mid lane, but Unforgiven and Kaiser are able to answer. So, Flackhead, three plates so far to the five in the bottom lane and the three in the mid lane from... Well, this is a 2v4 situation right now. Oh! Oh, but Armour's here staying. to protect. Armour's gonna jump in. There's the final chapter. Yanko's trying to get burst down, but they just destroy Rika where he stands. Armour, you could have backed, mate, but you sacrificed yourself for your team, mate, and you're both dead. Yes, yes, they are. Good kills picked up by G. Stacking up that tier. But over time, for the time being, G2 not in the worst of positions. Yeah, they're not in an awful position at all. It makes you know, sense you're if you're going to be the one initiating into the enemy back line. We'll also say the frozen heart pickup, an item we don't commonly see, yeah. but very good into auto attackers uh, and, of course, into AD oh, carries. Oh, go. yeah. Call of the fourth guard, Rika baited and was smarted, and they look for the engage, but Plackett able to get away with his flash. Broken Blade will be the first to fall. Super Mega Death Rocket does not find its mark. Caps down towards the bottom side of the fight. Forward for G2. The it's side lane is really where they have so many advantages. Where are you going, Caps? You've got the flash, has to get away. There's Cataclysm to follow up, but Rift Walk is an ability, and Caps uses it twice to get out of there. The chase is on still with the Lantern. Caps trying to jump away. Manages to escape. Call of the Forge God coming down as well, and Caps doesn't survive Unforgiven, who opens up two quick kills. Over to the Mad Lions, AD Carry. And again, Mad find themselves under the pick. Broken Blade is trying to answer on the other side of the map. But with the Rift Herald coming down, this should be another tower going in the favor of Mad. And who better than Unforgiven to take those kills? He's proven to be a big carry for the Mad Lions already in week one. Oh. Now he finds himself in a 1v1 against Yankos, but he has the level advantage, Medic. <sighs> Unforgiven and Gold in the lead. They'll get their first Hextech Drake, uh, their second dragon of the game. And G2 very much on the back foot. Very much rocked on their heels by this Mad Lions lineup. Engage, long range poke, good scaling. You just have to make sure that you don't concede too much in the early game. And when you're playing against the Cassidy, it's difficult to shut this type of composition down in the early game as we see another pick in top lane. And Broken Blade is just all as lonesome. Flash comes out, exhaust use as well. TP is now coming out from Caps as he was able to get back. That Luke Flourish is going to land. There's a curtain call as well, and armor will be sacrificed. And Yoya, will he escape? Oh, Hex Gates <laughs> exist. Caps, you're going to follow him? You're going to go oh, through what? the gate? We know we're stronger, then let's just force a Baron. Let's force a fight. We now know that G2 don't want to fight right now, especially in the full 5v5. No Orn ultimate just yet, but it seems that G2 don't have it's any gone. idea. Double AD carriage is going to melt through this. Gone in a matter of moments. Armut steps up and Caps and G2 realize the Seraphs already upgraded the crown of the Shattered Queen as well. Uh, it's, he is strong. Like, Kassadin will always be strong if you farm well and get to this point of the game. But can he actually ever get in? Because Rika can just poke him down. Mad Lions can just push forward. Broken Blade is going for the split. Down towards the bottom lane as the engage comes out. That's the call of the Forge God and the Cataclysm. Broken Blade's going to TP in, but Elioro's already down. So is Yankos. Both junglers dead. Blackhead going in. Unforgiven. Surviving off the back line. There's the curtain call, and here comes Caps. He's got a cat on his shoulder and he's got a penchant for killing. Jumps across the wall once again. Blackhead and Broken Blade not near his, not near their support. Given a higher level than Caps at the moment, Betty. Yeah. He obviously was funneled a lot of experience in the early game, but it's rare that that continues through the rest of the game. As Kaiser goes in, straight into a 1v3, forced away. There's the call of the Forge God coming out. Though Caps can jump across the Cataclysm. Holy! Whoa, that was a lot of damage. Like. 
the game at the moment is just pure burst. The Mad Lions show Flackett and Targamus the way back to the fountain as they burst them down. Mad now don't even need the Baron to open up on this inhibitor tower. They'll take it. Probably look for the inhib as well afterwards. Maybe even go towards top side as they can get a double inhib out of this. And then even gate their way back towards the Hextech Drake. It actually looks like Riku is a bit split from the team. G2 in a 3v4 do not want to take the fight. The inhibitor falls. Mad Lions will back away. Oh, what Rika. is this damage, That's man? The AP damage, man. His auto attacks are oh, weaker, but his blade. abilities are strong. They use the gates, but Rika flashes away from them. Elio going back in with the EQ combo. Broken Blade just able to survive. The action ult coming out, but he is sniped by a super mega death rocket. Mad Lions find two quick kills once again, and now it's only Yankos, Targamus, and Flagger left to defend, but you have to feel this is the end, my friend. Mad Lions looking to go. Two and one on the week. Take down the undefeated G2. And they really put them in their place. Yesterday, it was a back and forth affair between Mad and SK. Today, Mad in 27 minutes will take down G2. And they continue to be a thorn in G2's side. The Nexus Towers will fall. The final chapter will be exactly that for Targamus. He's knocked up and he's down. Say goodbye, G2. Mad Lions have come to play. The reigning LEC champions finish 2 and 1. They were close to getting the 3 0. They fell short to a Raptor camp yesterday. What a clean performance. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of question marks around this draft from G2. It felt